Hey! Chain, 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 chain of food. Chain, chain, chain. Chain of food. <coughs> chain, chain. Hey, listen. What's up, y'all? How you doing? Hello. How you doing? My name is Uncle. Y'all know that song? What's up, Tampa? I am eating. Figured I'd get on here. I was thinking about y'all today. It's, like, it's the weekend. A lot of people running around. Having a good time. Getting ready for the weekend. Luke was at the club in Orlando. What? Boston! I have, I've been to Boston one time in my life. I thought Boston didn't love me. I was never asked to come back. I'm in Eaton, Conk. This is Steam Conk. Hey, Germany. Y'all got conk in Germany? From the Bahamas. I'm eating Bahamas today. Conk and rice and peas. What's up, 74? I got to see who the hell you are, 74. Every time I... <coughs> every time I turn this motherfucker on, you be here. DC in the building. <coughs> I think I'm coming to DC soon. I think I'm, am I? They just, DC booked me. They keep trying to book me <laughs> in Cincinnati. <coughs> I think I'm wanted there. Yeah. I don't know what the situation is, but I think I might be wanted in fucking Cincinnati. <coughs> Luther is wanted. Virginia Beach in the house. Say, am I still rapping? I don't know. I did a song with um with a easy daughter. I don't know. I think they might be. I might be one. Cincinnati. I did a party in that motherfucker. It went south. I never could figure out shit. I go do these parties and everybody get loose. Freaky shit. And then they blame me. The authorities want to put me in jail. Or they want to question me about the party. I ain't got nothing to talk about. I ain't no snitch. Look at the video. Oh, you, it was your party. And they got naked. Okay. I don't own the club. They just booked me to come to the club. And when they come to the club, people turn up. I'm sorry. That's what happens when you go to a loop party. They turn up. That's why you can't have me come to every party. You can't have me come everywhere. Same like you're going to an R&B concert or an R&B party. My music is face down, ass up. So what am I supposed to do? Say face down, bleep, bleep. So people get loose. They get freaky at my concerts and parties. Ain't my fault. So how do I get blamed? How the fuck do I get blamed? Because somebody else lose their mind, take their clothes off, women start <laughs> making love to each other, and they blame me. You're the perpetrator. I'm just singing my songs. 
Shit. I'm just singing my songs. I ain't got nothing to do with that shit. That's why they ain't put Trump in jail. Trump, the people went to the fucking place after his after one of his parties and tore up the Capitol building. Hey, I got potato salad too. Potato, potato salad, yummy, yummy, yummy. I got plantains too. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I'm tapping into my heritage today. Rice and peas, rice and peas. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I don't understand this shit. That's why I can't go to Cincinnati. I don't know. Somebody might want to be a hero, put me in jail or some shit. It might be wanted. I ain't got no time to go to jail. A lot of times I be wanting to go to jail. I used to go to jail all the time when I was young. Fuck it. Fuck that. Let's go to jail. Let's beat everybody up in the club. Go to jail. Fuck it. No, you're going to jail. I don't do that no more. I ain't got old. I don't do that. My son asked me, Daddy, so why are you in jail? Why would you do that? My son looks at me like that, and I be feeling real stupid. That don't make any sense that you just beat up everybody in the restaurant. Why did you do that? So now what are we going to eat? Peace. Coaching. Jacks be gone. I don't know. Yeah, like I'm, I'm supposed to control the people. It's like when you go to a Prince con. I remember when I know I wanted to be an artist. Oh, shit. I, I said, uh, I went to a Teddy Pendergrass concert when I was young. Before Teddy was in the wheelchair. It was at the Hollywood arena or some shit like that. You had to ride down a dirt road on Highway 27 before they built shit up. I was a young dude. That motherfucker said, turn off the lights. And all the women start throwing their drawers on the stage. I say, that's what the fuck I want to be. I want to be the guy on stage where all the women threw the panties on stage by saying one thing. Then I fucked around and saw a Rick Jane concert. And he picked Tina Marie up in the air and he started eating her. I was like, fuck football, fuck being a football player. I want to be a fucking rock and roll star. I like that shit. Tina Marie in the air. Jesus. I was like, that's what the fuck I want to be. As a kid, stop up. No more. No more football. Start DJing and shit. Yeah. That's it. Listen. So now, what ends up happening to me? I go do these concert. I do these records. And what happened? Can't eat the fucking seaweeds. I do these records, I go do a show. People get naked. I went to a Prince concert. Nothing but women. Them damn women go in a Prince concert, they got lingerie on. Lingerie fucking right. Everybody getting freaky in these places. They never put Prince in jail. They never put Teddy <coughs> in the graph in jail. They never put Rick James in jail. They never put Madonna in jail. But oh, they fuck with me. What you happen for Combo?
We need to, we need to talk to you. About what? I didn't do shit. No, oh, <coughs> what the people did at your concert. That's why I'm very selective where I go at. I can't go to everywhere. You want to buy my car? My car, I could have redone with original parts to about a year. I'm actually bringing it home tomorrow. I'm bringing the baby home tomorrow. I'm not letting you buy my car. This is a classic piece. What's this? So I get on stage and they get naked. The people in the audience take, take out their titties. I bring people on stage. They want to make love to each other. Like it's my fault. Like I got a gun to somebody's head. But they want to bring me in to ask me some questions. Make a name for themselves. You're on the news. Luther Campbell got put in jail for a lewd and lascivious show. No, I didn't do nothing. I ain't getting naked. Last time I got naked on stage, <laughs> that's fucked up. <laughs> I'm eating conk, 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 steam conk. Last time I got naked, I was on stage in Japan. Wonder if you guys could dig up that footage. I ain't get completely naked. I just unzip my zipper. I was drunk as fuck that night. I was on tour in Japan. True story. Touring all over Japan. And every night, the little Asian girls, we was in Yokohama, Kyoto, Osaka, Tokyo, all everywhere we went. Yokohama. I get to Yokohama. Last show. We are for two weeks touring the whole damn country. Riding on the bullet train and everything. Go you go to the front of the stage. Little Japanese girls grabbing grabbing your dick. They got everything. I'm like, go back, like, what the fuck, right? You singing, you like this, and they grab your dick. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. So I'm like, okay, maybe this is some random shit. That's right, rest in peace, Teddy Prendergraft, one of the greatest of all time. I'm like, every, every night. So what happened? Yeah, seven four. Your old man jealous. Your ass gonna get in trouble. Tune in to me all the time. Tell your old man, don't worry about it. One thing I don't do, I don't fuck with nobody girlfriend. I don't fuck with nobody wife. I don't do that. Unlike a whole bunch of other dudes. They like fucking with people, wives, girlfriends and shit. And girls also, y'all like fucking with girl uh men, wives and shit too. And girlfriend, I don't do that. There's enough women in the world. Enough single women in the world to be fucking with somebody's wife. A girlfriend. So, well, I lost my chance of thought. So, we get to the last show. Every city we went to in Japan, they grabbing, grabbing the dick, grabbing the dick. I said, hold the fuck on. JT Money was over there touring with. I said, are they doing that to you too? Because you never know what's happening with the other people on stage with you. Because you doing your shit. Uh, let's go. Shit full up. 
10,000 people screaming and hollering, they sing, swinging off the chandelier. All Japanese people. I'm sitting there like, the last show. We go home the next day. I say, you know what? If they grab my fucking dick again, I'm going to put these girls on stage. Whoever grabbed my shit and whoever grabbed your shit, we bring them on stage and whoever else want to come grab some dick. I guess it was a thing they had going on. These Japanese girls want to grab the black man dick. I guess that was, you know, I guess they heard the stories about us black guys packing. So they want to grab dick. They had no other opportunity to grab the dick. Because there ain't too many black dudes over there. Most of the black dudes in Japan is all military. So they done heard the story. This is our opportunity. By the front row seat. And I started thinking about it. To finally grab a black dick. Something they dreamed of. Saw in the pornos. The black penis. So you go over there, that's going to be in my movie. I guess that was their whole fucking thing. Pay top dollar for the front row so they could be have the privilege of grabbing a black dick. And so every night, as soon as you walk to the stage, your shit get grabbed. Which, back then I, you know, back then I was Lucy Goose, I ain't had no problem with it. If that's what you want to do, grab the motherfucker. That's what it's for. Touch, but don't grab. Don't snatch nothing. Don't. So the last night of the show, see, JT Money, if they grab my fucking dick, tonight, bring the girls up on stage, and we're going to let them suck it. I said, oh. JT Money say, hell no. I don't believe you're going to do no shit like that, huh? I said, well, if Rick James can eat pussy on stage, why the hell I can't get some head on stage? Y'all know I'm going to delete this broadcast. <laughs> they use this against me to incriminate me. So what I do? I start getting the girls, you want to grab some dick? You want to grab? So my theory was right. The whole thing was they wanted to get on stage. They, wanted to, they bought them front row seats to grab dick. I had an interpreter. Interpreter couldn't come out there. So I got the first one, take a knee, sit in the chair, grab it, take it out. She grabbed it, took it out, and put it in her fucking mouth. I should have did that song, put it in your mouth. It's way before the song came out. Seven four, you better get off of here, man. Gonna beat you and shit. You know, Friday night people get drunk and they be wine. <laughs> so JT got him one over there. I got me and another one, then another one, then another one. Hey, look at man, we dying laughing in the backstage. I said we better get on a fucking plane because I ass might be going to jail the next day. Listen, we on the floor laughing. We didn't sleep that night because we just knew we was going to jail. We went to the fucking airport. Didn't check out the hotel room because I'm, I'm a great escape guy. I always do shit and I escape. I did some shit in, in Jacksonville and escape. Did some shit in Detroit and I escape. Did some shit in Louisville, Kentucky. I escaped. Tupac helped me escape in Louisville. Tupac helped me escape in Louisville. I'll tell y'all that story some other time. We ended up, me and Pac ended up in the hotel room uh, talking the whole fucking night. We became best of friends. But in Japan, so here we go. About a couple weeks later, somebody has some fucking footage. 
See, back then, we're talking about late 90s, way before cell phone recording. But unfortunately, in Japan, in the <laughs> early 90s, what we do with FaceTime and all that, they were doing that shit back then. In Japan, I was like, what the fuck are y'all doing? How are y'all able to do this? Because they're all on the same broadband and we had a thousand different companies and they had that shit going. So what ended up happening? The shit ended up on NBC Nightly News. NBC Nightly News. Luther Campbell, formerly of the Two Live Crew, in Japan. Girls performing oral sex on him. Unbelievable. And the United States government is talking to the NBC and blah, 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 blah whether or not he's barred and shit out of Japan. Japanese people say no problem. The girls got up on stage and they did it. It was on them. It's not on him. Unlike our government. Our government. Shit, I remember one time I was in South Carolina. Girls from the military, a sergeant girl, get on stage, start making love to the other girls. I'm standing on the side of the stage. Like this. Yeah, I said, come on up here if you want to make love to each other. Come, you can do it in front of everybody. Does that put me in jail? The girls end up getting on stage. I say, man, make sure you make these girls sign a release because that they able to be videoed. And if they do some freaky shit, they're on their own. Police called me after that. Two weeks later. Hello, we would like to talk to Mr. Campbell about an alleged event at the club in South Carolina. What? Well, one girl said she was right. Right? Who? No, 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 no. What is her name? Because I have a release of girls who jumped on stage and we have video of girls who was on stage and nobody with me even touched them. <coughs> no, we can't reveal the name. These are, these are, listen, the shit is funny. The shit that happens to us artists on stage after the show, when y'all going home, y'all in y'all car, y'all going screwing your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever the fuck it is, the shit we go through to get out of fucking town is unbelievable. Anything that happens, they blame it on us. So, I, Mr. Officer, I'm going to send you a list of people who signed release. If the person who alleged that she was raped on stage is on this release, then you owe me an apology. The lady name was on the release. I said, do you want the footage too? Because if we don't want you spending taxpayer dollars trying to file charges against people, see the whole thing. Because I, I got to the point where I get tired of these people fucking with me every time I left a city and I video everything from walking into the building. Before all these dudes are videoing now, I had to video because I was accused of so much shit. I can't help because everybody wanted to have sex on stage. Eventually, long story short, they still tried to put it on me. I actually got barred from South Carolina for five years. That'll be in my movie too. I got barred from that motherfucker for five years. I could not go to South Carolina. Y'all ain't even know that. I could not go to South Carolina for five years to perform, not even do an appearance. None of these rappers went through what, what we went through. And they don't have no fucking appreciation. That's why they go do songs with you on the song and don't even fucking uh, have any appreciation of the shit you went through. Say, but if you take this shit to trial now, the area in South Carolina outside of Columbia, either Columbia or Charleston, 
That's a rural area. It's nothing but fucking KKK people. And that's what... You, now, if you across the street in Columbia, then you you can take this shit. You'll get a fair trial. But over there, you're not going to get a fair trial. So take the fucking plea. Plea deal. Out of South Carolina, the entire state for five years. I served my five years. Murder Beach? Ha! You want Murder Beach story? Shit. They ain't fuck around in Murder Beach. It was Murder Beach. Murder Beach? No, Virginia Beach. Your Virginia Beach, you go to the beach. I'm going up for a beach pool party, do a concert. You go out to the beach, they got a big sign. I don't know if they still got that sign. No thongs. I'm like, oh, God. Why would they bring me here? I be, it be, I be bugging. People bring, used to bring, bring me to these places. They know you can't do this shit. And they know I'm going to just say, fuck it, and turn up anyway. So now I select select places where I go <laughs> cause I got my son my <laughs> you know I gotta go back to the football team can't have a coach out there doing some wild shit can't do that out of control just my shows I could do a movie on just my shows and the shit that happened after the show. I did a show in fucking when I was with the two live crew. I did a show in in Savannah, Georgia. It was us, Public Enemy, and a whole bunch of other groups. Back then, the New York rappers didn't like us. Not saying Public Enemy. Pub, me and Chuck been up friends all the time. It was the management. I remember Eric B. Rakim, we did a show with them in Memphis. We did shows with these guys all the time. Eric B. Rakim, they gave us this much stage. And say, y'all got to do a show for five minutes. Half of the sound and half of the lights. So you ain't getting the full blown effect of the, of the stage because why? Because y'all won't like these niggas from Miami. We won't think Southern people should be rapping. So when y'all see all this, so you see Southern Hip Hop, it was started in Miami. I started that shit. And it was like, the shit we went through with our own people, it was hardcore. That's why y'all see me on the, on my Instagram, you see me do a, a, a song with Easy e Daughter. Me, Easy e Ice Cube, all of us. Ren, all of us used to sit by the campfire because we couldn't get on a show or a tour with New York artists. They would not let us on a tour. It wasn't necessarily the artists, it was more the managers. They, they was like, if you ain't for New York, you can't fucking perform. Which New York end up being my number one selling market. You had some New York artists that had a problem with us based on our existence. You had them boys out there in Cali, then you had us. It was no nothing. It was no Atlanta. It was no nothing. It was just us. Loop Records, Two Life Crew. Nothing. No New Orleans, no nothing. I signed the first artist nationally out of New Orleans. His name was Bust Down. Look it up. Bust Lion had a song called Nasty Bitch. I'm giving y'all some jewels on Saturday. What the fuck is this Saturday? No, it's Friday. Sorry. I ain't started drinking yet. The sun got to go down for me. So we did the show with Eric B. Rakim. They gave us five minutes on stage. I said, this shit ain't right. They had to have us on the show because we were selling more records than anybody. What's up, my brother? We were selling more records than all of them. So they had to have, you couldn't have a rap show without having two live crew on the show. Frank Nitty, what's up, my brother? So they put us on the show. We did Savannah. And I had a big fight with Run, 
I had a big fight with a public enemy manager in the kitchen of the venue. I think I drove that dude all across the fucking place. Chuck came in, squashed me and Chuck been friends ever since. But every city we went to, they would give us five minutes because they really didn't want us and they really had a problem. And that's when the whole thing, a kid, they interviewed Kid and Play, Salt and Pepper and all them. So what do you guys think about this Southern hip hop? And they did the Donnie Simpson show. Y'all might have to look it up on, on uh, YouTube. And uh, Salt and Pepper say, that ain't really hip hop. They ain't hip hop. They just getting over because they talking about sex. And then they interviewed Kid and Play. They dissed us. Everybody was going after us. These motherfuckers down south can't rap. That's the shit we that's the shit we had to go to. That's the shit we had to go through. Professor Griff, that's my dog. They kicked him out of public enemy. He ended up signing with me. Everybody else was scared of him. That's the shit we had to go through. So what anybody? We go to do a show in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. No, 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 no. Was it Jackson? Biloxi. Big arena. We're on, on stage with Run DMC. Some old New York artists. I said, fuck this shit. They ain't giving, if they give us five minutes again, because the headliner control. The, the headliner and the promoter control the amount of time that artists get. So if you're the headliner, remember this, people. The people who headline the show, the opening acts, they then determine how much time they get. They'll cut your time. So they say, oh, let them niggas open up. They're assuming ain't nobody going to be there early. And let these niggas open up. Well, they couldn't have us open, so we probably went third in the lineup. Because you open up, then the promoter going to get shit. Because the people going to be like, we didn't get to see the fucking two live crew. So what ends up happening? I say, and you got to remember, I was big time DJ in Miami. And I was living a tough life. Say. So I was making a transition transition from being a tough guy to being a record executive. So I still had a lot of tough guy in me. You know, maybe not as many guns, but I had a couple guns on me. Anywhere I went. So I go and say, fuck this shit. These people are trying us. Dang, I ain't, I ain't finna be nobody's bitch. So we end up getting them to Biloxi. Getting on stage. They say, y'all got five minutes to live crew. Here goes this bullshit again. What ends up happening? I say, fuck it, Mr. Mix, cut these, do Peter Piper and play all Run DMC songs. That's what we're going to play for five minutes. We ain't going to do no songs tonight. And then I'm going to make up a song. That's why I made up Hey, We Want Some Pussy. It was Hey, We Want Them Pussies. So I was basically singing Hey, We Want Them Pussies. I wanted to fight, run them, see them on stage. And then we end up doing a song. So the whole bloodsy crowd was saying that shit. They run up on stage. We get ready to fight. And then they stopped it. The police came, all that. <laughs> that shit was crazy. <laughs> Montez Miller. Those were the stories. I'm telling you, I got mad stories. They do not want me to tell the story, Montez. I do the movie. It's not good. I told Lionsgate I don't want to do a fucking movie. Because you're going to lose a lot. Do one hour, 110 minutes. No. I looked at 10 scripts. I was like, no, I don't want to do, do a movie. I need to do a scripted series. 
I need to do a scripted series because this shit don't end. This shit is, is some amazing shit that people need to know about that nobody never wrote about because they weren't giving us the cover of Vibe magazine. Only person who reported on us was was uh, a couple times was the source. I was I don't think I was on the cover of the source two times. Shots out to the source magazine. All that other shit they weren't fucking with me. They ain't like they did not like us. I can tell you stories for days, people. We can sit on here for days. I can tell you stories when we when I would bring down. I was the first guy. Well, the second guy to bring down rappers to come to Miami. It was a guy named Tiny Head. He was bringing down rappers first, and then I started bringing them down. He ended up going to the church. He committed himself to God. God bless his soul. And then I would bring the artists down. T. LaRock, Mantronics, Jekyll and Hyde, which is Andre. Brought them all down. Two Live Crew, you name it. Jazzy J. I brought down Run MC, was paying them $1,500. And then when they got Hollywood, that's what, that's what pissed me off about them. All them dudes brought down Public Enemy. Chuck, Chuck D had the biggest concert ever in the history of Miami today. They do all that rolling loud shit. All that shit is fine and dandy. But we did the Miami Baseball Stadium. I had helicopters with fucking... Chuck D them coming out the helicopter. Big shit. It was, we had damn near fucking 60,000 motherfuckers at the Miami Baseball Stadium. I'm still looking for that money. I think I buried that money somewhere. I buried that money. Don't know where to find that. That was a lot of money. I made a lot of money that night. That shit was and major. Chuck D was talking about that the other day. But the crazy part about it, all those people, Salt and Pepper, Kid and Play, uh, you name it, all them fucking people, I ended up becoming friends. We all end up becoming friends. And see, that's how the world works. You can have disagreements with people, but life goes on. At some point, you know, you look at it, you get older, you're like, that was some bullshit. I was right, you was wrong, you was wrong. Then you could all come together and be like, yo, man, I was fucking immature at that time, man. Because that wasn't going to stop us. You get on the Donnie Simpson show and, and he interview you and he talk, y'all talk shit about us. Then I went in the studio and did a song about Donnie Simpson. So I know I wasn't going to get no play time on BET. I just fucking dissed the fuck out of Donnie Simpson. What the name of that song? I was like, you got these fucking green ass people on there talking shit. I, I'm telling you, I was making the transition from being a tough guy to being. That's why when all the people would get beat up in hip hop, shit. When they came to the, what they used to call us, the booty rappers. Booty. That's why it's so funny right now. They used to call us booty. That's booty music. That's booty music. That's what we were, those booty ass rappers from down south. I remember Method Man and all them. What's up, dog? What's up, dog? Them dudes down south, they be talking about dog. What's up, dog? They used to make fun of us. We were clowns to them. And boy, when we would go do them shows, boy, I would go to do the extra mile of setting that bitch on fire. Tear the stage up. Yeah, what's up, dogs? Kill the whole building. It was a thing. That's why when this story comes out, y'all will understand how deep this shit is. That's why they never want to tell my story. They never want to tell the story of Luke Records. They always tell you about Puff Daddy and this daddy and that daddy and that daddy and did thousands of their documentaries, docuseries on all these dudes who they want because them dudes are part of the establishment. I'm never a part of the establishment. There's only six studios in Hollywood. So I'll be laughing. They're going to tell the story at some point. And when they do, it ain't going to be no one, one movie. 
Well, you can tune in and see that shit, and they can cut that bitch down to the lowest terms. No, you're going to hear about all of it. Where this shit came from. Little old young guy throwing newspapers. Started a DJ group. Went from starting a DJ group. Started a record company. And all these motherfucking platinum artists started a record company, started all this shit. Tough guy on the street. On and on and on and on and on and on. And all the shit nigga had, nigga had to go through for hip hop. And still never got credit or just do. Still never got credit or just do. To this day. Shots out to Connie Orlando because that lady is the only person to have the balls to give me my flowers. Her first project when she became the big boss at BT, she gave me a lifetime achievement award. And I'll never forget that. Nobody ever gave me anything until that lady did that. A lot of them people, Stephen Hill and all them, they hated me. I guess I wanted a cup of tea. I didn't go to those, those kind of parties. Never would go to those kind of parties. So eventually the, the show is going to be... They say, hey, look, do a documentary. Can't, nope. I ain't doing no fucking documentary. Documentary on this ain't won't be long enough. There had to be a docuseries. Ain't long enough. We got to talk about the start, the beginning. We got to talk about discovering Trick Daddy, him staying in my goddamn house after I got him out of prison. We got to talk about Pitbull, who was selling fucking crack. And I had to get him, hold him, and tell him I love him. You got to cut these braids off your fucking head, and you're special. Discovering him, getting him off the streets. We got to talk about Ace Time when they came to my house and they had holes in their fucking shoes. We got to talk about JT Money, Jack and Robin, JT Money, MC Shadi, and that whole story there. Two Live Crew, Ghetto Style DJs. Going to the Supreme Court, fighting for free speech, fighting for the music industry, starting hip-hop in the South, getting thrown off the stage, getting barred from cities, going to fucking jail for this shit. Bringing down rappers like Roxanne Chante and Real Roxanne and being tight with Biggie. Bringing him down the stories of me and Biggie doing when we did the song together. That was a whole fucking, that's a whole show. Eve sitting there. Junior Mafia, we in the studio in New York. Doing a song with Big Pun. Whole Terror Squad. Mushroom Man. Going to the club with Fat Joe. Go to the club with Fat Joe. We do a song. I do a song with Big Pun and Fat Joe. Let's go to the club. Go to meet me to the club. Meet Fat Joe to the club. As soon as you walk in the door, it's Puerto Rican club in New York. Fat Joe slap the shit out of some dude. Bow, bitch, shut up. Oh Lord, what am I in? I'm sitting there again, tough guy, trying to convert to the real life, and I'm number tough guys around me. And then there's the two live crew. Crazy stories. Then DJing. Freestyle Steve know about that. You got the battle in the park. Then shoot the park up. Shots out to my boy Uncle Al. Rest in peace. A lot of shit. Now you add the girls into the drama. The wild parties, girls hanging on my balcony, climbing up the back of the balcony at the house. It's crazy amount of this shit. University of Miami going down there, they say, oh, you're paying the players off. Only in the movie, I will reveal 
whether I paid the players off or not. That's right. Uncle Wild, Sugar Hill DJs. Uncle Wild. If Uncle Al was living right now, Uncle Al would be bigger than life. You talking about one of the most brilliantest DJs ever to come out of Miami? Uncle Al. You see DJ Harry, DJ Khaled, DJ this, DJ that, DJ all that. Uncle Al was the realest. I'm just saying, God bless his soul. And them guys will tell you that. Real shit. Pack jam. They got stupid stories. I remember we brought down Divine Sound from T Neck, New Jersey. What people do. For money. See, Steve, you don't play that shit no more. That's when you're going deep in the crates. That's why when I listen to people like Freestyle Steve and I listen to D-Nice, I, I can listen to them. Some of these other DJs I can't listen to because as soon as they play on, before I let go, that, that's the extent of their crates. And I always call it crates because I come up from the era of DJing where we brought the records in the crates and you had to go deep in your crates. And I could tell a lot about a DJ when he can't go deep in his crates. When you're the level of old school music you can go to is fucking Frankie Beverly and Maze and then you got to transition out of that to back to some new shit, some Mary, Mary J. Blige or, or whatever it is. I consider that still new. When you go back down to Olympic runners and shit like that, see, they don't want me to fucking DJ on here. You don't want to bring back, yeah, that's right. Shouts out to Triple M DJs, Naberto. I was the first one to let Naberto them come DJ up here in Miami. You know, back then, you had to have, you couldn't come to Miami if you lived down south without a pass to do something. You might have drove through this motherfucker, go holler at some relative, but you really had to have passes to get through Miami. That's why when people came down to Miami, they had to check in. Unlike right now. It's a fucking free for all right now. Jam point of DJs. Slick Vic. Boys out of Broward. I remember we went a DJ to Hollywood skate ring. We went to some armory in, in Fort Lauderdale. We was battling DJs. Shit, they, them niggas had no intentions of battling. They had intentions of jumping. So they guess they wanted to fight us. But they ain't know we was we was a DJ group that a, a gang turned DJ group. They wanted to fight. It became a fucking shootout at the OK Corral. Some wild times. Vicious funk. Vicious vibe, baby. See, when you can tell a DJ when he go deep in his crates, if the DJ just plays Frankie Beverly, and that's where he stops. If he can't go play no Herbie Hancock, or if he can't go up in that motherfucker and play some Rock Creek Park and have a whole Rock Creek Park in that era mix, you got nothing. That's why if they let me be the DJ critic to give out flowers, I can tell y'all what, what DJs know what the fuck they're doing and the ones that don't because I am a DJ by heart. Fuck all the other shit. I'm a DJ. I'm a ghetto style DJ. First. City girls. I love city girls. I love the city girls. <laughs> I never met them But I love them I'm a fucking DJ number one Number one DJ And DJing in Miami is different than anywhere else Cause back we DJ You got four other DJs that went before you Playing the same shit <laughs> And if you, the, if you the last guy To get on the mic Basically you the headliner DJ And, lot, and, 
and I became the headline DJ. I was the last guy to get on the mic. So I couldn't start off with what the fuck all the other four guys had played all night. I had to be able to go deep into the crates. So I take you on, on a whole trip of all the hottest shit in the 80s, hottest shit in the 70s, hottest shit in the 60s. Hot shit. And you got to have the balls. That's why I told DJ Khaled what made him so great. I think he got it in his book. I said, Khaled, you ain't shit unless you could break a record. If you ain't shit unless you could break a record. If you are a DJ, you got to stand on a record. Where did I get that from? I ain't create that. I just came up with that in my mind because I used to go to this club as a young man when I became 18. It was called Big Daddy Lounge on 79th Street on Biscayne Boulevard. Big Daddy's Lounge. I used to listen to this DJ named Frankie Hollywood. He was who I looked up to. I looked up to Frankie Hollywood. You go to that motherfucker, Big Daddy Lounge, that shit be jumping Friday night, Saturday night. Frankie Hollywood is the best DJ I ever heard DJ in my fucking life to this day right now. I don't know where the fuck he at. But Frankie Hollywood would be like, I'm the first playing this shit. And I knew he was the first playing it because we all belong to the same DJ pool, which is called Jerry Java's DJ pool. So we would get our records. All the records that just came out that week, we would have those records before they wouldn't be playing on the radio. And the radio never played. That's right, 8800. 8600. Fucking right. We would have the records on that Saturday. All of us pick up our records. You go home, listen to it, listen to it, listen to it. You find a record. Oh, shit, this motherfucker hot. And you want to be the first guy to play the record before the radio station plays. And you go to that club, Frank Hollywood, if I say this the baddest shit in the world, if I say this the baddest shit in the world, it's the best shit in the world, because my name is Frankie Hollywood. Bam! Drop that bitch. <laughs> Parliament Funkadelics. Who the fuck is these people? Flashlight. Come on, man. Y'all don't even hear that. You can't even get a dude to give you a whole Funkadelics mix. See, I done segue into some other shit. I'm giving y'all some good shit about the art of DJing right now. We started off one thing, now we're on to some other shit. Cause I'm getting ready. For that. You had that strawberries, yeah. That was my club. I had in vogue in there. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell y'all what I saw when in vogue jumped out the minivan to come do a show at my club. Cause I don't want no beehive and all them fucking with me. I don't want them fucking with me. So I'm gonna just leave that alone. But Frankie Hollywood, bam. So I. Start doing the same shit. I mean, the first time, because I knew reggae, because my old man Jamaican, and I'm half Jamaican, and I used to make the reggae, the Jamaican uh, eight-track tapes for my roster friends who lived next door to me. They were fucking roster, they were mobsters. I used to get a, they, I make the eight track tape. I said, I don't want the money. They would give me an ounce of weed because they had all the fucking weed. I used to take the weed, get dollar joints, sell the dollar joints at school. <laughs> I always been a hustler. Made me some money. Yeah, Pack Jam. Pack Jam Team Disco. Major memories. I ain't going to talk about no more weed. Pack Jam Team Disco. I remember Biggie was like, Luke, I'm not going to perform in there. Pack Jam Team Disco, we used to call it the Apollo of the South. Speaking of Apollo, I think I've still barred out of Apollo. I did a show in Apollo. I don't know. The whole first five rows came down. 
I'm going to save that story. Because that's got to be big. Oop, at the Apollo. Oh, shit. Look at That's a legendary show. Dude from New York right now. I'm telling you, New York City has always been my number one selling market. Over Miami, over Atlanta, over Carolinas, all that. Number one selling in everything. New York City. Them fucking people in New York love me, and I love New York. I remember when I, when I first... So Biggie said, no, I'm not performing unless you go on that stage with me. Because everybody knew about the pack jam. You get your ass booed. They didn't want to hear. You know how groups come on, they want to sing all the other shit. And you really ain't got but one song. And you get up there and you want to sell a nigga that other song that just, that's getting ready to come out after that. Are you singing somebody else shit? Not at the pack jam. That was my team disco. That I, I bought, I purchased, I started, I opened. I had a team disco pack jam, team disco pack jam skate ring. Then we had to, we had we say fuck this, we ain't doing no more business uh, in these people skating rinks. They fucking with us, they getting half of the money. Then I opened up my own spot. Then I had the little one on 54th. Then I then had the big one on on 84th and Second Avenue. Biggie Smalls came to the one on 84th and 2nd Avenue. Biggie was like, I'm not, fuck that. I'm not going on stage in that motherfucker unless you are there. I was over there doing a video shoot with Jay-Z. Jay-Z had a bunch of ugly women, and he said, I need some pretty girls on. This shit can't happen. And Biggie, oh, Biggie sitting out there, man, I got to have some fucking... Uh, you gotta come go with me. I'm like, big, I'm fucking over here with Jay. This man fucked up. This Jay-Z first coming up. Then I called Vl Glory Velez. When I called her, she had a couple girls. And I said, Glory, you might need to go in there and have a conversation with Jay in, the, in his trailer. Okay, let me fast forward to the big... So to get in the car, go over there to the pack jam. Like, yo, I'm not getting on stage. <laughs> Them niggas ain't going to boo me. I said, look, <laughs> Big, right now you got like two songs. Just go play the two songs. Get the fuck out of there. Let me give you the formula. Don't go up there and sing no other motherfucking songs. Because them niggas, <laughs> niggas going to boo the shit out of you. They going to stand there like this here. Pack jam was hard as fuck. If you was a pack jam junkie, it was hard as fuck. It was worse than the Apollo. Apollo was just a TV show. You go to the pack jam, them niggas look at you like this here. Boo! Boo! They'll boo your ass with all your old songs. Not, not old ones, the new songs. And now when you five that shit that they want, then they'll be like, yeah, yeah! That's all they want. I say, look, just go in there and five two songs. You got two hit songs at this point. Don't go up in there trying to do no show. Love them niggas up and talk about put your hands up and all that shit. They ain't with that shit. These some different motherfuckers. This is Miami. They different. And he already knew. He was like, I heard about this fucking place. They got them. I mean, them people raped Dougie Fresh in there. Dougie Fresh had to stop that motherfucker shit and say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dougie <laughs> No, Pack Jam, Steve will tell you, was no fucking joke. Dougie say, stop, stop, stop. Stop the music. Half of the artists right now could not go into the Pack Jam and perform. Because they so emotional. They need treatment. They got issues. They got girlfriend issues. They couldn't, they couldn't go do a show in the pack jam right now. No. They got smoking issues. You know, they, I don't know what kind of babies they are. I don't know. Half of them ain't wasn't on the titty. They get <coughs> ran off that motherfucking stage. They will be mentally distraught. They won't be any good after that. No, they couldn't go in. You had to be a real fucking performer. I'm going to leave y'all with this, ladies and gentlemen. I know I had some good times. I got on here impromptly to tell y'all some stories. I started off, I totally forgot what the fuck I started off talking about. And then I ended up into all these stories and shit. But when we do this,
scripted movie series. I'm going to find somebody to do this. If y'all know somebody want to do this loop uh, TV show, y'all have them hit me up. Have them DM. I'm not doing no movie. I'm not doing no documentary. I'm not doing no docu-series. We're going to do a scripted series. Other than that, I'm not doing it. I'm fucking not doing it. I'm not doing it. I done turned down a whole bunch of people. Oh, let's do let's do a, a movie on the First Amendment case. No, fuck that. Oh, let's do a movie on the Two Live Crew. No. So what happens to Pitbull and JT Money and Trick Daddy and the UM scandals and all the Supreme Court shit? No, I can't do no. Tyler Perry. Call Tyler Perry up. Y'all hit him up. Say, Tyler Perry, you need to do a loop story. I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not, no, no documentary shit. Old footage and shit. No, we ain't doing that. We're going to do a scripted TV series. And all this wild shit that happened at the office. The women. Ugh. I'm not doing it. Coach Hover. That's y'all to find out the real University of Miami, how that shit was really fucking built. Cause this shit y'all looking at right now. All this shit is fake. All this shit is living off the dream, living off the the, the legends, but not really living that life. You know how people go. You know how you see these fake rappers who ain't part that life, but they be singing about somebody else's life? That's how our football is right now. We ain't really bought that life. We just live off of everybody else's life perpetrating a fraud. Ain't no such thing as fake it till you make it. I'm just saying. I love y'all. I holla at y'all. No, no, no. We're going to beat Bama. Plies. Yeah. I'll let y'all. Another day I'll get on here and give y'all some more stories. Give y'all a Tupac story. Then I'll give you the, the Jay-Z story. Why Jay-Z was on the couch and how, how did he end up on the couch when the girl was eating the other girl, Tupac. Then I'll give Biggie Small the controversy story. Uh... That's a whole, all that shit gotta go in the in the in the in the in the, uh, the uh, scripted series. All that shit gotta go in the scripted series. How I'm trying to stop these dudes from fighting. All that gotta go in there. I holler at y'all. Y'all take it easy. Have a very safe weekend. Uh, I'll be in Chicago next week. Um, y'all come down for the Orange Blossom Classic. Please come on down. Shit's gonna be crazy. Big, the first major African American event in the United States since the pandemic. Got Jackson State versus Florida and M Rattlers. The halftime show is going to be epic. You got Deion Sanders bringing his team down against the Rattlers. All the hotels pretty much damn near sold out. It's going to be a whole weekend, Labor Day weekend. I'm not going to no fucking Atlanta to watch UM play no <laughs> Alabama. No, I'm home. We got concerts. Miami big concert. Shit's gonna be crazy. Better come on down. I'll holler at y'all.